Well, Europe is synonymous with rail travel, but it's often a bumpy ride for passengers traveling between the rail networks of bordering countries. Well, for one, network timetables are rarely integrated with those of neighboring countries. That often means long waits at borders. Another problem is infrastructure. Rail networks run on different electric systems. They have different signaling systems, even different gauges of tracks. That means that a train in one country can't necessarily work in another. Then there's the overall passenger experience. Buying a single through ticket from country A to country C is almost impossible in Europe. Miss your connection? You can forget a refund. Each part of your journey is run by a different operator focused only on their domestic leg. Now one campaigner is hoping to pressure the EU into doing more about just these kinds of problems by identifying some of the worst connections. As part of his cross-border rail project, John Worth bought a Eurail pass and spent the summer crossing every border in the EU that could be traveled by train, making 95 crossings in total. And he documented his frustrations along the way. John joins me now to talk about his cross-border rail project. John, welcome to the show. Why was it important for you to see these examples of failed or defunct border connections in person? It's really important when you see those things on the ground, how those connections really matter to people in these border regions. That it's very important that they can actually get across the border on an everyday basis to go shopping, to go to school or university, things like that. And I wanted to check, is it actually good in some areas or is actually this problem, the moment you cross a border by train in Europe, everything gets more complicated. And unfortunately, what I ultimately concluded is these problems are pretty universal. Whenever you cross a border in the EU by train, everything gets harder than if you're just within one country. At the same time, you highlight 20 different border crossings. Some shuttered due to divergent infrastructure. Some were barely traveled because of incompatible timetables. Is there a common problem or narrative to all of these sites? Basically, it's very important that, that most railway companies think very nationally. They don't really want to prioritize international railway connections per se. And so therefore, all of these problems then crop up in a variety of different border regions. It's important to say that there are some countries that get it right, countries like Austria and Czechia, for example. But in many areas of Europe, these cross-border railway lines have been disregarded, not only just now, but in many cases for some considerable decades. And because we're facing a climate change, a climate change crisis, it's very, very important that Europe ups its game on railways and allows people to travel from one country to another in as green a manner as possible. Um, so that's what I want from the European Union, is that the European Union should step in to solve this manner of problems. Uh, of those sites that you visited, is there any one that stands out as the most uh, egregious or absurd in terms of the lack of connectivity? So there's one um, which is at the border between Lithuania and Latvia, which is perhaps the most crazy of all. Um, if you were to go from Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, to Daugavpils, the second city of Latvia, that used to be possible up until a few years ago. But now the train stops in the final village on the Lithuanian side of the border, a village called Turmantas, with just 280 inhabitants. And the train could cross just 20 kilometers further to reach the city on the Latvian side, uh, but it doesn't run anymore. And all you would need would be a tank of diesel fuel in order to manage to facilitate that connection. And when I was there, there were people crossing this border on foot because they actually needed to get to Lithuania. Um, so those are the, the sorts of things that I discovered. And it's just very sad when you discover something uh, like that. Uh, and there was another one as well at the border between Portugal and Spain, um, where it's a, a diesel train that runs on an electrified line um, between Porto and Vigo, because neither railway company has thought to buy electric trains for its electrified international line. And so some of these things are very, very quick and very simple for the European Union to step in to solve. Uh, but at the moment, there's not really the political will at that kind of practical level for mm. the European Union uh, to step up and solve those issues. If these connections are so critical, why don't the rail networks work together across border to make them possible if there is such a demand from people, for example. It's very, very difficult for that demand to be turned into practical action. Um, those people in Tormantas or Daugavpils, who can they really ask to solve a problem like that? 
Now, for me, it's a cross-border problem. So it's Europe-wide. This thing afflicts pretty much every country in the European Union. So the European Union should step in, as I see it. But the European Union says, OK, we want railways to work, but they take quite a kind of a hands-off approach. And that's why the European Union has not actually said to the governments of Latvia and Lithuania or, or Portugal and Spain, hey, look, you've got a problem there. You need to actually solve this practically. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to do with this project is to say, hey, European Union, at many different pro borders, you've got these types of projects. It's time to get on and fix them. All right. That's John Worth, founder of the Cross-Border Rail Project. Thank you very much. Thank you.